ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard another video. You know, it really sucks when all your best friends live so far away. Like sometimes all I wanna do is hop on a plane, break into your houses, hug you a hundred times, and eat so much food together. But instead, I gotta settle for the next best thing, eating all of your favorite foods from around the world for a week alone in my kitchen. So I asked you guys over on Instagram to message me your favorite foods from where you're from, and I think I got over 10,000 messages. That will never not be so crazy to me. I know that you guys are from all over the world, but it's hard for me to sometimes wrap my head around just how many of you there are. And it just felt so unreal seeing all these messages from you guys sharing a piece of your lives, your home, and your childhood with me. And because food is my love language, I just felt so much love reading through your favorite foods. So thank you for sticking around and eating food with me. This video is all about you and celebrating food and friends from all over the world. Starting off at the first place my finger landed, Hong Kong for some tofu. But not just any tofu. Tofu pudding, or douhua. Growing up, mother son actually made homemade soy milk every weekend, so this brought me back to childhood. And for this dessert tofu, you combine the soy milk with a thickening agent to make this super fresh, extra soft tofu, like crazy soft, it almost melts. In Northern China, we call it tofu nao, which directly translates to tofu brain. <laughs> and you can add it into a bunch of different dessert soups, but I made some sweet ginger syrup to drizzle on top. Oh my God. Look at that. Oh my god, that's so satisfying. Whoa, this is so fire. Wow. I made that. Whoa. <laughs> Next, we are taking a long flight over to Lithuania. Now, this soup is a combination of all of my least favorite foods. These are beets. And we're gonna be using these to make... I can't pronounce this, so I had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's excited for cold beet soup? Oh dear, I'm definitely gonna stain my entire white shirt. This cold beetroot soup consists of a creamy blend of pickled or boiled beetroots and tangy kefir or buttermilk poured over grated cucumbers and hard boiled eggs and it's served with dill and based on the recipes I looked up, I'm really concerned just plain old boiled unseasoned potatoes. It's apparently a summertime staple and it's something locals and visitors look forward to because it's refreshing, unusual, and tasty. Uh oh, this is very experimental. Oh. Mm. <laughs> What's your little Well, it's definitely not the best soup I've ever had. It's definitely the pinkest. Sorry. Very pretty. A little bit <laughs> different. I'm getting another shot with the potato. I think we're done here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Next up, West Africa for some jollof rice. I'm going to apologize in advance for my slightly atrocious home-cooked versions of your favorite foods. I really did try my best with my lack of cooking skills and authentic ingredients. They will not even remotely resemble the real thing your mother probably made you growing up, but I can promise you they're made with all my love, so I hope I can make it up to you with that. So yummy. This is a staple dish in West African cuisine. It's basically a one pot meal of rice, tomatoes, onions, peppers, and other seasonings. And holy crap, it made my kitchen smell heavenly. It definitely would have been better if I could pair it with some better side dishes, but even just with some chicken, it was a very new and exciting and red experience for my taste buds. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I like the texture. It's also just very satisfying to eat. And we are ending off the day in the motherland with Mother Son, where we're eating one of Mother Son's guilty pleasures. <laughs> Is this your favorite? Sure. Rojia mo directly translates into meat in a bun. Typically, it's pork belly stuffed into a crispy shelled bun. <laughs> wow, the meat is tender. Mm. For our little buns, we actually recycled the soybean remains from Hong Kong soy milk making to make some fluffy bings. So a delicious zero food waste full circle. <laughs> Recycling. Pretty cool. Good morning. We are waking up bright and early today to begin the long babka making process. Well, I'm gonna be honest, I was a little intimidated and I just had no idea this was gonna take me 48 hours, but you guys are always worth the wait. This baked good is kind of in between a bread and a cake. Babka, I think, means grandmother because this bread used to be baked in a traditional mold that looked like the skirts worn by grandmothers and because grandmothers were the people who baked them. Chocolate babka is a sweet braided bread filled with swirls of semi-sweet chocolate. I ended up using some random expired chocolate, so my filling looked slightly suspicious and chunky, but I just really hoped it would somehow come together in the oven. And when I sliced her open, wow, I felt like a very proud mother. Literally so delicious. And if I didn't use expired chocolate or the wrong kind of yeast, I feel like it would have been even more amazing. Mm. Oh, how true. Wow. Mm. 
<laughs> Rating. A 10. 10. Mm. I like how it's crunchy on the mm. top too. Mm. Slay. Mm. This is how much is left. But seriously, like dead serious, you can't just have one slice of this bread. It's Clearly we were not able to stop. It's like the perfect texture and addictiveness and sweetness and butteriness. Yeah, so grateful for those grandmothers. <laughs> <laughs> and we are using a lot of imaginary plane fuel today because we are going all the way back to Taiwan for an all-time personal fave. Well, you said your favorite was real fun. That is also our favorite. I didn't trust mother son or myself to make it properly. My mouth waters just saying it. This is one of the most beloved Taiwanese comfort foods alongside the glorious beef noodle soup, obviously, which of course we ordered too. Ooh, it smells good. This is a savory, delicious rice bowl dish made from braised fatty pork, hard-boiled eggs that are infused with the flavor from the meat broth, all on top of some steamed rice and veggies. Oh, yum. Yum! The meat just like falls apart. And we got some wontons. The main character of this dish is the pork belly, though, who is richly seasoned, cooked to an almost gelatinous texture, and coated with a layer of sticky broth. Irresistible. Remarkable. Every bite tastes like love. While we were on this side of the earth, I thought we'd pop by Korea for a little break from all this traveling so I could rest and recover by drinking some ginseng. From the world's number one ginseng brand, Korea Ginseng Corporation. I've grown up with ginseng in my life. My parents are very passionate about ginseng and its health benefits, especially father-son. He drinks it every single day. Korean red ginseng's main benefit is to help increase natural energy levels and help with fatigue relief. Its benefits have been proven by many studies, and one study in particular tested 180 participants and found that in four weeks, the participants that consumed consumed 3.6 grams of red ginseng, were about 1.53 times less fatigued, so they had more energy than the group that didn't consume any red ginseng. If you wanted to try out Korean red ginseng for yourself, you can use the link in my description and use my code LINDA15 for 15% off. Now that I'm energized again, it's time to head over to our next destination. These are momos. It's like xiao long bao, but yellow. They smell really good. I saw a lot of momo requests, mm. and because the name was too cute, I needed to eat her. The momo is the national dish of Nepal, which is a type of steamed filled dumpling. Apparently, these cute little dumps are so popular in Nepal that almost every restaurant offers it on their menu. Spicy. Ah! Oh, no. oh my god, my mouth is on fire. Note, no, this one is... On the outside, it just looks like any other dumpling, but once you bite into that meaty filling, mm. it's like a punch of South Asian aromatics and herbs, ginger, garlic, cumin, coriander. I like the thickness of the skin. Brave. Mm. While you look very similar to my favorite soup dumpling, you're definitely built a little different. Unfortunately, that's like a 7 out of 10 for me. Hey. Our next stop, we are hitting up Venezuela for some arepas. I'm so excited. These are a common street food in different parts of South America. They originated hundreds of years ago in a region that now makes up Colombia, Venezuela, and Panama. And we just love three ingredient recipes. Pre-cooked cornmeal mixed with salt and water formed into a round disc. They're meant to be flavorful, crisp on the outside, tender and fluffy on the inside. You open them up like a little pocket and just stuff them with really anything you want, which kind of really stressed me out because I can't make food decisions for the life of me. And please never ask me where to go out for dinner. We won't be eating dinner for like four hours. But for breakfast, I did a little avocado toast a rape a moment. Mm, delicious. I love it. And with the crunch and yummy cornmealness, it was beautiful. And then for lunch, I stuffed it with some shredded chicken. It was so good. Mother son also grew up eating lots of cornmeal, so she was a very big Arepa fan as well. When I was little, my mom used to buy me frozen dumplings that we called the non-Chinese dumplings that were filled with different cheeses and potatoes, and we would just fry up a bunch after school and nibble away it's at them. me and my mom eating it, so I'm making super small portions of everything. When they say to use one egg, I have to use one eighth of an egg. I believe this is called pierogi roski, a very popular type of Polish dumpling that can be sweet or savory, but the potato filling is the most traditional. And when I say popular, yeah, extremely popular, because I've never seen so many people so passionate about a dumpling in my life. Cutie. Oh my goodness, they're a little ugly, but ugly cute, you know? I don't know what happened there. And they're supposed to be served with sour cream, onions, and bits of crispy bacon. And even though Chinese dumplings look and taste a little different, they really do serve the same purpose. They're like a comfort food, a taste of home. Mmm, that's, oh, that's really good. The onions are so good. 
Once upon a time, I was at a little Christmas market in the UK and I tried these puffy circles of joy, which I drenched in Nutella and Biscoff. Until this day, I still dream about them. Puffridges or Dutch mini pancakes are small fluffy yeasted treats made in a special cast iron pan, which unfortunately and obviously I do not own. So instead of cute and round, they just turned out looking like mini pancakes, but they still made me too happy. These Dutch mini pancakes are traditionally served hot with a little bit of butter and a good sprinkling of confectioner sugar. So cute, a little flat. They're just like mini pancakes. Mmm. Much chewier and not sweet at all. Mmm. Eggier. Reminds me of a bubble waffle. Traveling and food are like two of my favorite mm. things in life. But for so many years, I let food ruin traveling for me. And let me tell you, traveling to the exact same place without food rules makes it an entirely different trip. And you know, life without food rules is also an entirely different life. You feel just so much more present and carefree and excited because instead of counting calories in your head and fixating on your body, you're actually there laughing and tasting and making memories. I will say this 3,000 more times, but a healthy relationship with food is a part of health. Being able to go on vacation without dieting first or stressing about skipping the gym or hitting your protein goals, that is part of a healthy, balanced life. So soft, mushy, light, crispy. Health isn't just about what you eat and how many calories you burn, it's all the ways you nurture and nourish yourself. With new experiences, guilt-free food adventures, granting yourself rest and time off, doing things that energize and fuel your soul, saying nice things to your body, challenging those food rules, eating food you love with the people you love. You deserve to enjoy all of life, all the foods, all the good things. You deserve all of your own love, regardless of what your body looks like, my friends. Anyways, we are in one of my dream travel destinations today, trying Oyakodon. I am so confused why I've never had this before. So simple, yet so majestic. That's pickled. That is pickled. So bouncy. This is my jam. Oyakodon literally translates to parent and child rice bowl because the dish is made of chicken and egg. Well, it may just look like a brown blob, it's so much more than that. It's a very extremely yummy brown blob. It's a bite-sized chicken, tender onion, and softly cooked egg drenched in a sweet salty sauce served on a bed of steamed rice that just soaks up all of that gorgeous sauciness. I swear, the more bites you take, the better it gets. And as a sweet and salty girl all the way, one freaking million out of 10. Mm. <laughs> That's the best tempura I've ever had. This has become one of my all-time favorite foods now. If you know me, you know I cannot survive without peanut butter. It's like my one truest love. I don't really know what's going on. So that's why I was so touched when at least 20 of you were demanding I try. Kare kare. Oh, this looks so yummy. Ah! A type of Filipino peanut butter stew made with a rich and thick peanut sauce with oxtail tripe and mm. lots of veggies. So creamy. And I think maybe the version I had just wasn't the best because it wasn't as magical as I thought it would be. But I also had some skewers and I haven't eaten that many skewers in my life, but these were probably the juiciest, yummiest ones I've ever tasted. Oh, this is so good. Oh my God, I love this. Mm. And we also ordered some sisig, which is another Filipino dish where all of the good parts from a pig's head. You say this is pig head? Specifically, the cheeks, snout, and ears are simmered in water and chopped into small pieces and fried. I'm not gonna lie, I was hesitant to try it at first, but the minute it entered my mouth, oh, it is good. That slays. <laughs> The most conflicting and debated spread of all time, Marmite. A part of me has just always really wanted to lick it. it smells kind of sour. Also a large part of me just didn't want to be anywhere near it, but life is too short to not to lick things. So here we are. Marmite is a British savory food spread. It's a thick, sticky paste made from concentrated yeast extract. Oh my God, why does it look like a tadpole? A byproduct of brewing beer. Think of a yeasty, salty, soy sauce-esque flavor with the consistency of old engine oil. Supposedly, this is how one eats it on a piece of toast with a layer of either butter or margarine. And if you're a casual daily Marmite eater, let me know. How do you do it? It kind of hurts. It's very slow. It's kind of good. Do you want some more? Mm. Try again. Oh. Okay, I don't think we're trying to compare it to peanut butter right now. Wait, don't eat the whole thing. Give me some. I don't hate it. Like, oh, that's a little too much. Not bad. Seven out of ten. Don't know if I would do it again, but. And we are off to Belarus to taste test another member of the dumpling family called Pelmeni. Uh oh, I got some blood into here. Oopsies. 
my god, the onion juices are just squirting in my eyeballs. Their origin is debated, but they have been described as the heart of Russian cuisine. They're kind of shaped like little wontons or raviolis instead Look of the long cute. shaped dumplings I'm yeah. used to, but I really like this. It was a fun change. The filling is also very simple compared to Chinese dumplings. It's pretty much just ground meat and onions. They're usually eaten plain or topped with sour cream, melted butter, and fresh dill. And I wasn't expecting much from these two ingredient dumplings, but they surprisingly had a wonderful soupy savory flavor punch when you bit into them. It kind of makes you feel all warm and happy on the inside. I don't know, I guess that's just the power of a dumpling, guys. No matter where in the world you eat it. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put a little bit of sour cream on it. Mm. Mm. Whoa, bursting. Mm. Flavor juices. I like the pea. Rating. 10. You just say 10 for everything. No. They have like a nine. <laughs> My son is going rogue right now. Go crazy. Go hot trip. <laughs> Unpopular opinion, but mac and cheese is overrated. I've tried to get into it and it's just not my thing. However, this recipe may have changed my mind a little bit. Dude. Brother, are you allowed to eat the like sides of this cheese? Uh, no. Oh. What a waste. I grated my finger. Worth it for the mac and cheese. This is Alpine macaroni. It's essentially Swiss mac and cheese with potatoes, topped with caramelized onions and crispy bacon and served with a side of applesauce. The applesauce did seem a little questionable to me at first, but once you experience it, it just makes so much sense. Stop it! The savory pasta and the sweet tartness from the applesauce and the beautiful caramelized onions. Oh my God, it just works. Mm. Onions are so good. So applesauce. Mm, that was so good. I think this is the only mac and cheese I've ever approved of in my life. Mm, wow. mm. We are walking to our next destination, Vietnam, for something that's red, spicy, and apparently better than pho. If you've never had, I'm definitely pronouncing this wrong, bom bo -e. Think of it as pho's hotter, younger, spicier cousin. They actually don't really taste alike at all, but they do share some similar traits. A super hot, flavorful stock, slippery noodles, slices of tender beef, and fresh herbs. While pho is made with just beef, bom bo -e is made with beef and pork. And I read that the two big flavor differences is that bom bo -e contains both lemongrass and pork blood cubes. Yeah, it's a little spicy. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. will always have a special place in my heart, but this is young. It's kind of spicy, savory, and sour all at once, and comforting and aggressive at the same time. And even though I have a negative spice tolerance, I enjoy how she makes me sweat a little. A little spice for me. What do you rate it? Wow. I've only eaten Indian food like maybe three times in my life, so I just had no idea what to expect here. I walked in confused, opened the menu confused, ordered confused, and then got my food confused. When this gigantic crispy sheet crepe item appeared before me with four different sauces. I'm sorry, what? It's, it's... It's not small. I was like, how do I maneuver around her? Where do I begin? So I looked around trying to copy what everyone else is doing. And then I just decided, you know what? I'm just gonna dig in. Okay, there's something inside. Ooh. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know what to do. <laughs> We're monsters. Apparently masala dosa are one of the most popular South Indian breakfast dishes made with fermented rice and lentil batter. And it was so good guys, like light, soft, crispy, yummy paper stuffed with a savory spiced mashed potato filling. Mm, so crispy. You don't even notice yourself reaching back for more and before you know it, it's just gone. This is addicting. This is so good. What is this? And I also did try all the dips and just could not tell you what any of them were. Are we eating? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I like the green one and I like this one. I did some googling and I think the soup in the tin, which was my favorite, is called sambar, which is a South Indian stew made with lentils, vegetables, herbs, and spices, but it could totally be something else. And I don't know why, maybe my taste buds just weren't ready for this taste explosion because I kid you not, for the next two days, I felt so dehydrated, like I never craved water so much, but it was definitely worth it. It's breakfast time and we are having scrambled pancakes, but not my typical scrambled oatmeal protein powder pancakes, but Kaiserschmarrn. Or in other words, scrambled sweet pancakes or emperor's mess. The name is a compound of the German words Kaiser, which means emperor, and Schmarrn, which can be translated as a scrambled dish, because it was first made and served to an Austrian emperor. Originating in Austria, this traditional German pancake is sweet and fluffy and made with rum-soaked raisins that is torn into bite-sized pieces, caramelized, and served sprinkled with powdered sugar, applesauce, and preserves. Mother son made fresh applesauce. I am actually the biggest raisin fan, so I was overly hyped for this. Scrambled pancakes. Mmm. 
Mmm, yummy. This is yummy. It's very yummy. Raisin slayer. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. My love for you today. I can't stop. Now all the applesauce is yours. <laughs> Let's make some finger noodles. Because breakfast just blew my socks off. I just had to stay for lunch too. I received a lot of German food recommendations because Germany is actually where a large chunk of my subscribers are from, which is really lucky for me because I just can't get enough of your food. Schofnudeln or finger noodles are potato noodles, like German gnocchi almost. And I love how I'm allowed to make them kind of ugly. Like every shape and size of finger is accepted. We love a body positive finger noodle. Anyways, you just boil the fingers, toss them in a pan with butter or whatever sauces you want. We even toss them in some cinnamon and sugar, and these were just the most comforting, delicious fingers I've ever eaten. Cinnamon, sugar, butter, pesto. Cheers! Mm. It's much softer mm. than I thought. Mm. It's like a chewy pillow, kind of like a gnocchi, but chewier. I like how it's long, so a lot of the surface area gets crispy. Mm. Pesto. Mm. I was excited for this one. Wow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What's your favorite? Tula. Pesto. It was a dicking. I would have stayed and eaten for a couple more days. I'm serious, like I can't stop. But my friend Walid, who is Palestinian, demanded I make one of his favorite dishes, muzadra, specifically with brown lentils. This is a signature Middle Eastern dish of lentils, rice, and caramelized onions. I read somewhere that this dish is actually referred to as a poor man's meal because of how inexpensive and simple it is to make. This dish is served all across the Middle East in various forms and goes by so many different names depending on where you are. <laughs> The onions are fire. Mm. Now, I've always been very hesitant to talk about different cultures and cuisines that I'm not familiar with. I was really worried about not making these dishes authentic or perfect enough, but the beauty in cooking and food isn't about perfection. It's not about using the exact measurements and ingredients. And even if you do, you might not get the same result as someone else. You don't have to make it perfect. You're allowed to make it your own. Life would be pretty sad if we didn't love things just because they weren't perfect enough. You know what's better than being perfect? Being kind, growing, learning, being vulnerable, being real, being human, being excited about food, eating chocolate babka all day, inner peace, funky shaped dumplings. Ah, burning myself. It's worth it, it's worth it, it's worth it. Finally feeling enough and owning your quote imperfections because you realize nothing and no one is perfect. Or I guess you could say everything and everyone is already perfect, you know, in their own unique way. Don't shrink yourself to fit into a mold or expect the same outcome by following someone else's recipe, routine, or diet. It's really not your life if you spend it trying to make it look like everyone else's. Really, it's about making our own silly mistakes and being okay with restarting when we forget a couple ingredients. It's about adding some extra handfuls of chocolate and self-love along the way. Sometimes the best version is far from what you were trying to make all along. And I hope you can remember that the best version of you isn't meant to look like somebody else. I tossed her in the air fryer. Do I just eat it? Oh, this is so good. What the heck? Mommy, you must come try. This is an empanada. Mmm. Whoa, well, those flavors though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a huge fried dumpling. And we are ending off this food tour with something sweet, obviously, because no ending is complete without dessert. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Just use a whisker. I can do it. Uh, so we're ending it off in South Africa with Malva pudding. It's somewhat similar to a tres leche cake or sticky toffee pudding. It all starts with a spongy cake flavored with apricot jam, and then you pour this sweet, creamy mixture over the pudding. I was in actual shock. Sweet, caramelly, creamy perfection, guys. Even though I undercooked it a little bit by accident, I've never tasted anything quite as delicious, ever. Oh my god, it smells so good. It's just sinking away. It's a little bit of a hole in the middle. It says, leave to stand for a while before serving. All right, I will leave you, bye. After traveling all over the world this week, it reminded me how my entire world was my body and food for so long. And I can tell you 100%, your world is meant to be so much bigger than that. You really do become the best version of you when you stop trying to be the smallest version of you. How <laughs> I knew you would like this one. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh my god, it like melts in your mouth. This is one of my favorite desserts ever. <laughs> what just happened? Oh my god, that's so good. Oh, yummy.
favorite dessert of all time, I think. But yeah, I find it so cool that we come from so many places, backgrounds, cultures, and traditions, and all have our own stories and struggles, but somehow we can still relate to one another and be there for each other. I also just love that food, in one way or another, brought us together. And this was a very delicious, educational, and different video for me to film. Thank you for being a part of it and letting me have a little taste of where you're all from. And I'm hoping next time we can do this in person. I guess I will see you when I land. Bye.